Is it well with your soul this morning? Some of you are like, uh. <laughs> well, listen, this morning we start a new series, a prayer series, which goes right along with it is well with my soul. So as we go into this series, as we go through July, we're going to be dissecting Mark 6, the Lord's Prayer. All right. But before we jump into that scripture this morning in Mark 6, where Jesus teaches uh, the people how to pray, I felt it important to discuss briefly the importance of prayer. And being 4th of July weekend and us recognizing those who have served, those still serving, and of course freedom is not free, I thought I'd teach you guys a little bit of military strategy this morning. And this will tie along with uh, prayer. So if you guys would use your imagination with me, if you are an infantry soldier and you're in the, in the woods, in the bush line, and your instructions are to take out an enemy convoy, all right? You have a rocket launcher. All the guys are like, yeah. Ladies are like, what? All right, but your instructions are to take out this enemy convoy. So as this convoy shows up, it's a tank, it's a, it's a vehicle with all these antennas, and it's a truck with full soldiers. Which vehicle would you take out first? Which would you shoot with a rocket first? Now, a lot of people would say, take out the tank. That's the main dog right there. Well, here's the problem if you take the tank out first. By the time you reload to fire again, that middle vehicle that has all the antennas has already called up for backup. <laughs> and in about a few seconds, you're about to get steel raining down on your head from artillery. Or planes are going to fly over dropping bombs or something, and you're going to be wiped off the face of the planet. See, military strategy, you take out the middle vehicle first that has all the antennas. Why? communication. Now this is an old school example because nowadays every, every vehicle has communication, but the point is you take out communication and now those other two vehicles are sitting ducks. And the reason I share that, because it's the same way that Satan and the dark side works. Pastor Terry mentioned this last week, I'm going to reiterate it now. I don't know if Satan is so busy trying to get us to sin as simply distracting us from communicating with our Heavenly Father. Because if you're not communicating with your Heavenly Father, you have any direction. <laughs> Again, if you take out communication, the soldiers, they're, they're, uh, they're confused. There's fear, there's chaos. You don't know what's going on. Another example for you, if, <laughs> if we had a terrorist attack and all cell towers were taken out, young people would not know how to survive if these things stopped working. But seriously, if they took out communication, I don't know how to communicate now. <laughs> so, again, a military strategy, same strategy that Satan and the evil forces that we live among, that's what they're doing as well. And it's not just for us Christians, but it's for all mankind. Basically, as long as they can keep us from communicating with our Heavenly Father, He's got us where, we, where He wants us. So, before we jump into uh, Matthew 6, learning how to pray, I want us to look at another story, again, seeing the importance of prayer. If you guys would turn with me to uh, Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Do we have the PowerPoint up? <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> Mark chapter 1, I'm going to be starting in verse 29. And I'll be reading from the NIV. Starting at verse 29, it says, As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. Now let me stop there. <laughs> the whole town gathered at the door. Now I didn't do research to see how big this town was, but does it matter? <laughs> if the whole town shows up at your door, it's a lot of people, isn't it? And it says that the rest of the evening, Jesus is healing people and casting out demons. Not that you guys have done that before, but that takes a lot out of you. It was obviously a late night for Jesus. 
he probably, by, by morning, he probably felt like he just spent, did it all nighter with all the teens. Like he was wiped. All right, so it seriously just wiped out. So the whole town came to him and he's doing all this. So verse 35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. <laughs> Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they, excla they exclaimed, everyone's looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I've come. First point for, for this is we find that the Son of God is praying. He obviously sees the importance of prayer. Some people might say, he's Jesus, he's God. What's he doing, praying to himself? <laughs> obviously he's not. <laughs> he is praying to his heavenly Father. But like I said, it was a late night. Jesus was tired, and yet he still got up early. And he went and did his praying. The next point about for prayer here, he got away from the distractions. He got up, he left the house. I don't know about you, but I just imagine all these people laying all around the house with the whole towns there. And he got up and he went away from the distractions to a solitary place that's quiet, and he could pray. Another thing we see here about prayer, I don't know, we obviously don't know what he prayed, but I just, I can just imagine part of this conversation while he was praying, maybe his heavenly father was saying, son, I'm proud of you. You've done a great job. And last night, man, you healed all those people and cast out demons. That's a great, you did a great job. But listen, today, let's, let's go over, let's go to the other towns and let's, let's continue preaching the word. Jesus is like, right on. He says, amen. And there's disciples like, there you are. You need to come on back. Everyone's waiting for you to sign more autographs, sign t-shirts. Come on. You're popular here. And Jesus probably had a temptation right here. Do I do God's will or do, do I do my own? Now think about this. Again, all the town came to him that night. So Jesus was quite popular, giving out free medical care. <laughs> he was very popular. And the people were still there. So there probably was a temptation, human temptation, of thinking, I'm pretty important. <laughs> people are noticing me. This is awesome. So when his disciples are there saying, come on, come on back. Everyone's waiting for you. There's probably that desire inside going, they want me back. This is awesome. And yet he had that prayer time and he had a choice to make. Do I do my father's will or do I do my own will? And we find that Jesus was obedient. So he takes off his disciples to the nearby towns. I wonder what the people were thinking that's at the house. Dude, it's been like, Two hours, where's Jesus? You know, it's been four hours, it's time, lunchtime. We just need him to come here and like pray and McDonald's will fall out of the sky or something. I mean, the people were probably waiting for him, but he took off somewhere else. So we learn a lot from this story about the importance of prayer. What would have happened if Jesus had not prayed that morning? <laughs> would he have stayed at that house? continuing hanging out with the people and these other people that he reached out to later that day in the days that come in his other villages were not have been touched and healed. Power and prayer. I feel that one thing we can learn from this story is Jesus maintained his identity in his heavenly father through prayer. What would, ha what would happen if you guys don't pray today or you don't pray tomorrow or you don't pray throughout this week? How different will your week be? How different will your week be if you do do some praying today? You do get up and do some praying tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday. Will your week be different than if you didn't pray? There's power in prayer. And again, prayer is simply communication with our Heavenly Father. In the dark side, the evil forces want to prevent us from having that connection. Again, this communication is a relationship. It's a relationship with our Heavenly Father. So a question would be, how is your prayer life? Maybe a better question is, how is your relationship with your Heavenly Father? We all know 
to have any kind of good, close relationship, you got to have communication with each other, don't you? Which, by the way, communication isn't just talking. <laughs> it's listening as well. But, again, if you want to have a boyfriend or girlfriend, if you want to have a, 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 a healthy relationship with your spouse, healthy relationship with your kids and, and parents, you got to talk to each other. you got to communicate with each other. Again, how is your prayer life? I think of Matthew 7, uh, verse 21 to 23. This is the scripture that says uh, when you die and you go to heaven and, and they, they, they say, Lord, Lord, have we not done all these great things in your name? The modern version of, this, of that verse is, Lord, Lord, have we not gone to church every Sunday and pay our tithe and help our neighbor out? Have we done all these great things? And the Lord responds, I never knew you. Depart from me. Do you know your heavenly Father? Prayer is that relationship. Prayer is that communication with your heavenly Father. So, again, pointing to the importance of prayer. So from here, let's jump into what Jesus teaches about how to pray. So if you want to just flip over to, the, to Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, we'll be looking at chapter 6. Now, the series, we're going to be dissecting 9 through 13. But let me start reading at verse 5 of chapter 6. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your heavenly Father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Now let me stop there. <laughs> your father knows what you need before you ask him. I've actually heard this from people before. Then why pray? If Jesus or God Almighty knows what you need already before you ask, then why do I have to pray? It's a relationship thing, isn't it? It's a relationship thing. If we go back to, for example, if we go back to Genesis 3, Adam and Eve, they commit the sin, they eat the fruit and realize, whoa, you got parts I don't have, and they decide to start the first game of hide and go seek. Because if you remember, God shows up in the garden, and Adam and Eve are like, let's go hide. <laughs> It's like we're going to play sardines and see if God can find us. So they hide, and God, walking through the garden, says, Where are you? Now, God is all-knowing. <laughs> Do you think God had to ask, Where are you? <laughs> no, he didn't have to ask. He knew where they were. It's a relationship thing. To give a more modern version, my kids like to play hide-and-go-seek. So my little girl, Jillian, she loves to play hide-and-go-seek in her house. And for those of you who have little kids... Let's play hide and go seek. And little Jillian will go over. <laughs> you know, now as a father, I come around the corner and there she is standing there and giggling. It could be a real killjoy if I walked in and said, really? I can see you, Jillian. You're horrible at this game. I want to play with dad some more. <laughs> yeah, real killjoy. But instead, as a, as a father, I come out and be like, where's my Jillian? You know, she's like, you laughing some more. It's a relationship thing. So again, going back to this verse, here he knows what we need before we ask. But it's a relationship thing. Relationship, relationship, relationship. So verse 9, this then is how you should pray. And let me say this as well. There's nowhere in Scripture that shows that Jesus actually prayed this prayer. What he's teaching the people here is a pattern, a model of how to pray. Now again, I'm only going to cover this first verse this morning, verse 9, as we go through this series. The next sermons will be covering the rest of this. But this morning, I'm going to look at verse 9 that says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So the first part of this pattern, this model of how to pray, you start off by praising God. 
praising God and honoring and respecting his name. Now, many of us are probably thinking, duh, I already knew that. But how often, <laughs> how often do we get into a routine? Okay, for example, just an example, praying before the meal. We do it so many times. Do we actually think of our Heavenly Father when we pray? We get into such a routine. Okay, we just say a blessing. Dear God, you know, thank you for this day. It's always the first thing people say. <laughs> thank you for this day. And thank you for this food. Bless your bodies. Amen. Like, they just said it because that's what they've been programmed to say. Are we actually thinking? Are we actually praying and acknowledging God? It is so easy to get into a routine. And again, recognizing and respecting his name. <laughs> I know my kids, for those of you that have more than one kid, you will understand this. Kids feed off each other. So there's been times when I've, we ask our kids, you know, for example, Elisha, can you say the blessing? Now, Elisha and Caden were just goofing off. So Elisha would be like, dear Jesus. And we're like, stop. And like he has his eyes open because he's going to see what, what, how Caden responds and how Julian's responding. And then he tries to be goofy. And we're like, stop, you're talking to God. Okay, you know, but <laughs> it's like we're teaching him because he's not, he's not recognizing and not respecting God's name. He's just doing something that this is what we always do every meal. No, teaching them how to respect God's name. It's interesting the conversations I've had with young people in the past. A lot of young people, they will pray for their meal before, before a meal, I mean, but they will not pray for a meal in a cafeteria at school. <laughs> and I was like, why not? Because people can see me. <laughs> and I've taken people out before for uh, like, you know, just get a Coke at a restaurant at Wendy's or something. And okay, let's pray. And they're like, are you serious now? Like people can see us. Does it matter? Are you ashamed of your heavenly father? So this model that Jesus is teaching, praising God, and respecting God's name. And if you, re if you read the Bible, there's all, kinds of, there's all kinds of names given to God. I encourage you to be creative in your prayer time. You know, again, there's different, God was called different things. God Almighty, God is universe, creator, almighty. I mean, you, there's all kinds of different names. Be creative and use some of those names and acknowledging God. And let me say this as a side note. I heard this from a Christian comedian years ago. We always hear God's name used in vain. Oh my God, and all this other stuff. Why don't we ever hear other lowercase God's name in vain? Oh my higher Krishna. We never hear that. Oh my Allah. We never hear that. Why is it always God Almighty and Jesus Christ? Think about it. The dark side has so convinced this world, we gotta, we gotta put down the most holiest name of them all. So that is a, that's a, a, a possibility of witnessing. Some of you might think it's hard for me to like open a conversation to share my faith. All right, the next time at your work, well, you're not in school right now, but if you're at school, you're with friends and they're like, oh my God, you're like, oh, he's my God too. <laughs> he's wonderful. Like what? I've done this before. I used to work uh, delivering pizzas as a part-time job when I was in Pennsylvania. And I came into work the one night and it was me and another driver. And uh, the, the girl had just pulled a pizza out of the oven. She was getting ready to cut it. I pulled up and I uh, uh, walked right next to her. And she says, Jesus Christ. And I said, oh, good, good time to pray. And I bowed my head. And she goes, like that ever worked. I prayed before and he never answered him. Boom. We got into a 45 minute conversation that led to me praying for her that a month later, God answered a prayer in her life. But it all started just because people use God's name in vain, yes, we do not support that. <laughs> but let's use that to our advantage. Okay, when I was in the military, <laughs> need I go there? <laughs> the, only name, the only way people know Jesus Christ is by using his name in vain. But again, when they're saying, oh my God, oh my God, he's my God too. And this is what he did for me this week. Why, what are you talking about? Well, you said, oh my God. I, I, wish, I, I wish I could show this video. I, I couldn't find this video. I found this video uh, through Facebook. This was, this was months ago, but I could not find a video, but it's a video of a husband and a wife. And the, the wife says, honey, can you go to the store and get, get some groceries? And he's like, sure. And as he walks out to the carport, she comes out and she's like, 
I don't, I don't remember his name, Tom. Let's just say it was Tom. She was like, oh, Tom, you are such a great husband. And oh, Tom, could you go to aisle six and get those wonderful eggs? And oh, Tom, could you? And Tom, you are a great father. And oh, Tom, and the, the, the whole time the, the husband's standing there like, what's wrong with you, girl? And she just continued going on and on and on. The whole point of the video was to show sometimes when we pray, <laughs> when we pray, we're constantly saying, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And God's going, God's going, I know what my name is. You don't have to keep on repeating it. <laughs> so again, I couldn't find that video. I wish I could play it, but it was a, a really, it was a really, it gets the point across. So again, the side note to this was when you hear God, when you hear people using God's name in vain, you can use that as a springboard into witnessing and sharing your faith. Now, going back to respecting and, and uh, honoring God's name and praising God, don't we have a lot don't we have a lot to praise God for? Especially here in America, land of the free. But we have so much to praise God for. So next time you, you open up in prayer, whether it's before a meal or your, your personal devotions and prayer time or whatever it is, man, start off with praising God. Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if Donna's here, but Donna's been, uh, knowing her, she's been sending me pictures from, she's been on vacation and she's been sending me all these uh, sunsets and sunrises and, you know, trying to make me feel jealous because here I am here and she's there at the beach. But the point is, she sent me one uh, this last week and my first response was, that is God showing off with his artistic abilities. And she just responded, amen. You know, so just praising God, we have so much to praise God for. Um, an exercise that I learned years ago when we were talking about how to pray, an exercise that I, I learned, learned from a convention and I actually tried it. This exercise was using a chair, pretending, I hate to use the word pretend, like Jesus isn't really there, but when you have your prayer time, pretend, wherever you have your prayer time, whether it's in the living room or wherever, pretend that Jesus is sitting next to you whether that's on a couch or in a chair or whatever, pretend that he's actually sitting there when you pray. And when you had that, when I did this with, with this exercise, I pretended he was sitting there and I started to have a conversation with him. And one of the convicting things was, I was like, Lord, you know, I thank you for the day. And, you know, just, I went through my prayer and I found myself, kept on saying, Lord. And after a while I realized, what, he forgets his name. Just in me pretending he was sitting there, it opened my eyes to, I'm having a conversation with another person. <laughs> and it changed the way that I prayed from that point on. And I want to encourage you, all of you, if, if you struggle in your prayer time or whatever, pretend that Jesus is sitting next to you wherever you do your prayer time. Pretend he's sitting next to you. Your conversation with the Lord will probably change. There's a story of a, of a retired pastor and he was old, and he was in the hospital. He was kind of on his last days of living. And the, the nurse, every time the nurse would come in to uh, check with him, she'd hear him talking, and, you know, and then she'd walk in, he'd stop talking. And she's like, she was thinking he was starting to have mental issues. Uh, and, and so finally one day when she walked in, she heard him talking, and then she walks in and he stops. And she's like, excuse me, sir, who are you talking to? And he goes, I'm talking to Jesus. He's sitting right there in a chair right there. And she's looking over like, yeah, we need to take him to the funny farm. You know, he's going. But she's like, okay, I respect that. And, you know, things just continued on. Well, the day finally came when she came in the room and he was, he was dead. But when she came in the room, he had, she found him. He had gotten out of his bed and he was on his knees at the chair like this. And she realized when she saw him there, he crawled into Jesus' lap to have the final talk with him before, she met, before he met with him personally. And that really impacted that nurse. I wanna encourage all of you in your prayer times, encourage you again, how to pray. We start off by praising God, but Again, pretend that he's there in the room with you and have that conversation with him. Be real with him, but start off by praising his name, honoring his name. Even if that is 
at a meal time, again, half of us are going out to eat after this, after Sunday school, when you bow your head to pray for that meal, don't just take it for granted. You are talking to the God of this universe, the one who made us in his image, the one who raised Jesus from the dead, who calmed the storms and did all these other miracles. We have this awesome ability to have this conversation with him at all times, whether you have Wi-Fi or not. <laughs> we have this awesome ability. Let's not take it for granted. Let's have these conversations with God Almighty. Let's draw closer to him, remembering who we are in Christ Jesus. But like I said, let's start off by praising God and honoring his name. With that said, I'm going to ask if you guys would stand with me as I close us in prayer this morning. <clears throat> Let's bow our heads. Holy Father, you are so good. And I thank you so much for this ability that you give us humans to be able to communicate with you at any time. There's never a time where you're too busy, where you're sleeping, or again, you don't have cell connection. You are there. You are always available. And would you please help us? Help us as your people, help us as the human race to recognize and take full advantage of this ability we have of communicating with you. I don't know where everyone is here in this room this morning, where they are their relationship with you. But I pray that this week, everyone in here and those listening will start communicating with you more, hopefully starting today. And that this week will be a different week. And I hope everyone knows here that if we start seeking your face more, the dark side will start attacking us even more because they're going to try to distract us as much as possible. Would you help us not to lose our communication with you? Help us to spend that time with you every day, throughout the day. Help us in, in teaching us to praise your name <clears throat> and honoring your name. But I, again, I pray, Lord, that this week, the communication between you and us will increase a whole lot. And that, Lord, you will start making a difference in our lives even more through the power of prayer. We can't thank you enough, Lord Jesus, for your grace upon us, your love. You were just so good. Be with us now as we go from this place and continue to strengthen our faith in you and our relationship with you. And I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, you guys are dismissed. Thank you for coming this morning.